Welcome to Legacy Boxing Showcase, sponsored by Legacy Boxing Promotions. Ed Nunez, along with Austin Colleen, joined in studio by WBC Latino champ, also New Mexico welterweight champ, Josh Pitbull Torres. Legacy Boxing Showcase had a boxing card at Tingley Coliseum this past Saturday, July 20th. We'll break down all the fights for you. Great to have you in studio, champ. Always a pleasure to be here. Thank yeah, you. Great. You know, you're just a fought on Saturday and uh, it was a tough fight, champ. We'll get into that. I, as I told you, I saw the last three rounds and uh, Oliveira, Alfonso Oliveira, uh, not a lot of margin for Ari, both coming at each other and just winging some punches. Uh, as I mentioned, you came out with some renewed energy in the 10th and I was telling, I called Austin right away. I was like, I don't know where the champ got that energy from because you came out in the 10th uh, as if you thought the fight was in the balance. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. We'll get to that later. Austin, let's go over the uh, first fights uh, the, of the evening. Um, opening bout, Lorenzo Benavides uh, won by TKO over debuting. And if you want to check Austin Colleen's, Colleen's Corner.com has a great write-up beating Randy Ramirez. Ramirez came in a little bit overweight, 182 pounds. Talk to us about that fight. And here's uh, Lorenzo Benavides, who lost a lot of weight for this fight, Austin, by the well, way. Well, actually, when you look at Ramirez, he doesn't look that fat there. Benavides in white, Ramirez in black. And uh, That's he, pretty uh, good to me. And he really uh, gave Lorenzo a tough fight. He didn't uh, fold up. He, you know, he clinched a little bit, but he used his height pretty good. And uh, Lorenzo's just an amazing fighter. How many 175 pounders weigh five feet two? Probably no one besides him. Ramirez trying to score there on the ropes, but uh, that was gets hit end. by a shot there. So uh, Benavidez um, overcoming. Ramirez in that decision, Austin, your, you made your comments on that fight, sir. Well, I look good because before I started, I predicted that Lorenzo would have his first knockout. Unfortunately, I continued to make predictions, <laughs> and they didn't go as well. That's okay. Uh, that one did turn out right. Second bout of the evening featured Bridget Baca, 2-2 two and two of Albuquerque. She won a split decision over Katie Ramirez, who came in with the record of 0-3-1. One at 137 pounds. Let's take a look at this bout here. Ramirez is in, and they're both in purple. purple awesome. right. Can you uh, Ramirez, identify for the crowd which was, I don't know which purple we're saying that, yeah. Baca has their back to it. She has the pigtails. Okay. Well, actually, they both have pigtails. One has one, the other has two. Baca has the red tape on her gloves. Okay, thanks, champ. Yeah. And uh, both girls in the past have, have been opponents, which is a tough way to make your living in boxing. But uh, Ramirez is, only has a draw on her record. Her draw was against an undefeated girl from Texas. Tell you what, if you see this fight here, they're really going, uh, I remember watching uh, Katie Ramirez fight uh, Jordan Garcia a couple years ago, and uh, Katie Ramirez does not back off either. But this was a split decision, I believe, for Bridget Baca, Austin. That is correct. Uh, Bridget Over Katie Baca trained uh, with Yoruba Maru's daughter, and uh, she's a lot bigger than Baca, but okay. it probably paid off. We're going to go to our third bout of the evening. Again, a split decision there for Bridget Baca over Katie Ramirez. Let's take a look at our third fight of the evening, and Austin, I'll let you take that away. Well, this was an interesting fight cause, because Avagon, who's on the uh, right, Turned pro in uh, 2013. Gabaldon. Gabaldon. You say it better than I do. Fighting the uh, perennial veteran, Anthony Hill. I thought this was my upset pick of the night. Needless to say, I wish I hadn't made that prediction. Uh, Gabaldon shocked me how good he was right from the start. Hasn't fought in four years, Austin, Gabaldon. Uh, actually, six, I think. Okay. Oh, man. Stunned Hill there. Hill in the red shorts. Our red trunks and Gabaldon and the Valley Viking colors right there. But uh, Gabaldon just came right out, attacked the body, and he was pretty accurate with his punches. All three judges had the scoring 40 to 36. So it was uh, definitely unanimous. Unanimous decision for Gabriel Gabaldon, who, uh, again, only one professional fight. This was at 144 pounds. Let's take a look at our fourth fight, and then we'll talk about uh, Josh Pitbull Torres and Matthew Diamond Boy Griego in the next segment. So let's take a look at the fourth fight of the evening. Go ahead, Austin. Well, this fight 
turned out to be really good. I, I've been overlooking uh, uh, Sanchez for a long time, but all of a sudden it dawned on me he's beat a Toro Crispin, and then he did a number on Joe Gomez. This is uh, Jose Luis Sanchez against Jose Raging Bull Pena. And Pena is in the jet black pants. And uh, boy, I'll tell you what, <laughs> they're, uh, they're throwing some punches there. This was six rounds of this. And uh, Sanchez, he's just really gotten a lot better. He's got a nice jab. He can fight on the inside. He's pretty rugged. But this uh, Pena came to fight. And it was a, a split decision. Or I think it was a split decision for Sanchez. I had him winning also. But when I went home and watched the fight on tape delay so I could write my column, I actually had it come out a draw. So, uh, I well, Jose Luis Sanchez goes to 10 and 1 with four KOs. This was at 152 pounds, Austin, and a very game Jose Raging Bull Pena. Well, this is Sanchez's eighth win in a row, and uh, <clears throat> he wants a second chance at our guest. But of course, uh, Josh is a hot item in his own right, so. Yeah, with uh, six straight wins, and we'll, Champ, did you get a chance to see uh, any of those bouts at all? I know you're in a, in a dressing room getting ready for your own fight. Were you able to see any of those fights, the ones that we just looked at? Were you able to look at those at all? I did. I saw the first few fights. I watched Lorenzo right off the bat, and I knew he was going to be hungry. I spent a, a few rounds in sparring with him, so I knew that he wanted that KO. They had mentioned that to me. And I told him that I sensed it. I knew he was training hard. I knew he was hungry for it. And he went out and he got it. Um, same thing with Bridget Baca. She was training hard. I saw her spar with Shariah Maru, who is a world-class amateur fighter in herself. So I think that made the difference. I think the conditioning made the difference because it was a real close fight the first couple rounds. And um, I think she finished strong and, and threw more shots the third and fourth round, which I think made the difference for her. We had Shariah Maru on on the mic with Mike Adams on Saturday, and uh, she's real close to you. <laughs> so she, she made us laugh because she's nervous. She was, <laughs> she was nervous for you, yeah. man. Now, Yoruba went and said, hey, you know, champ, we're going to get it. And, you know, mm -hmm. Yoruba's Yoruba, man. So he came with Yoruba Maru. Right. But uh, Shariah, I had to laugh because uh, she really looks up to you. They're and, like little uh, yeah. brothers and sisters to me. And uh, Yoruba's always been like a big bro to me. Oh, They've man, been like yeah. family. I've known them for years. They're great people and great people to have around me in my corner. Well, he brought the Puerto Rican touch to the show, man, and you got to love it. You know, Yoruba's going to tell you exactly how he feels, and uh, he's got great ba uh, boxing knowledge. He brings he's, the flavor, too. He brings yeah. the flavor. We'll uh, be back to Legacy Boxing Showcase after these messages. That's a good answer right back. That's a great combination for Griego to end it.
is glamour, frailty, what is desire, diamonds. They say a life lived without passion is hardly worth living. Ma'am? 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 Dang, this one made me feel all special. High school sports are back. The 2018-19 season kicks off, and you could watch every ProView Network broadcast live on the NFHS Network. Every moment, from every game, from every sport, including all NMAA state championships. Get your highly discounted monthly pass now. Go to ProViewNetworks.com and sign up. Watch New Mexico's best. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walk to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Welcome back to Legacy Boxing Showcase, sponsored by Legacy Boxing Promotions, Ed Nunez, and along with Austin Colleen in studio, the WBC Latino champion, also New Mexico welterweight champion, Josh Pitbull Torres, along with his son, Julian Torres. Great to have you in the studio, champ. Let's go to our fifth fight of the evening, and we'll have Austin Colleen, Matthew Diamond Boy Griego, came in at 10-0 uh, against Leonardo Torres, 4-13. Austin, take it away. Well, in this fight, I thought uh, <clears throat> Diamond Boy probably would get a qu quick knockout, maybe second or third round. But the way the fight started, he basically laid on the ropes, worked on his defense. And I just figured nothing wrong with that. He's just going to get a few rounds. But Torres was throwing a lot of punches. You take a look right there, Austin. Go ahead. And uh, I actually gave the first round to uh, Torres. Diamond Boy in blue, Torres in the gold trunks. He, he, just, he just kept pressuring Diamond Boy. Obviously, Diamond Boy has the better skills. And uh, at the end of the first round, I, don't, I figured I must be the only person in the arena that thinks this. But I told uh, Adam, my partner there. Adam Deal? Deal, that uh, I thought that he had won the first round. And the second round was a repeat of the first. So at the end of that, now Adam was starting to join me in that, that thinking. And uh, we thought... Uh, Diamond Boy had dug himself a hole. But then in the third round, he came to life. He started using his lateral movement, staying off the ropes, landing clean punches, and he clearly won the third round. Uh, so I said, well, this is it. He's going to start popping him. But in the fourth round, he went right back to laying on the ropes. And uh, I gave uh, Diamond Boy the fifth round, but I gave the sixth round to uh, Torres. And it turned out that uh, Matthew Diamond Boy did win by split decision. And Austin, you felt a little bit, uh, you know, it could have gone either way. It could have slid in either way. You, you, you know, I talked about this fight yesterday and about the, really the entire card. And you felt this fight could have gone either way. Well, when I watched the replay of it, I didn't change my mind. Uh, I did change my mind when I watched the replay of uh, Sanchez's fight. And when I watched the replay of Josh's fight, it ended in the sixth round for me. So in fairness to Josh, I just, you know, it's not fair to, I, for me to say something that I couldn't back up because I didn't have anything to watch. Without further ado, let's go to the, uh, to the main event here. And the, again, the uh, Josh Pitbull, Torres, 21, 6 and 2 at 146 pounds. Split decision over Alfonso Oliveira, 146 pounds of Tucson, 11, 6 and 3. Let's take a look at some highlights here, champ. Champ, maybe you want to tell us what we're looking at here. Oh, nice overhand right there. Yeah, that's something that we worked on in camp is looping that right hand because we knew he was going to be rangy, trying to circle outside. So 
But after I caught him with that looping right hand in the first round, he was real cautious of it. So he started uh, leaning back and it was a little harder to connect with the looping right. So I had to straighten it out a little bit, start using my left hand, start mixing it up, digging to the body, obviously, as you can see. But I mean, he was a tough customer. He kept coming, he wasn't here to lose. And I knew that coming into this fight. As soon as they mentioned that name to me, I was familiar with him already. And when they said, hey, you want to scrap with this guy for the WBC title? In the back of my mind, I said, this is a dangerous fight. Uh, he's awkward, he's rangy, but I told him let's do it because that's what I'm all about. I'm about challenging myself. I've never backed down from a fight in my career and, and I won't begin to do it now. So I just want to continue to work on bettering myself and my camps and, and fighting great fighters and putting on great fights for the fans. And you obviously uh, did that. Now in the seventh round, I believe, I thought you had him hurt. It looked like he stumbled back and maybe it was the eighth round a little bit. Did you ever feel like you had him in trouble where you could capitalize? I mean, he did recover from it. There's a little good combination there by the, the champ, go ahead, cha champ, go ahead. Yeah, I knew I had him hurt a few times and I was obviously landing the bigger shots. Every time I hit him, it rocked his body, as you can see. I had a little bit of weight advantage on him the night of the fight. But uh, yeah, I was definitely landing the harder shots, but he was never out of the fight, even though I buzzed him a few times. Anytime I would move forward to try to kind of capitalize on it, he was still in it. He was still trying to win, using his range, uh, peppering me with that jab, and it was real frustrating. So it, it took me a while to adapt and, and to really dig deep and, and finish the fight strong. Austin. I um, noticed right when the highlight had started, I think it was the first round, he stumbled backwards. And I noticed several other fighters were staggered without a punch being thrown. Was there something wrong with the ring? Because I noticed they kept working on it between fights. When I arrived to the arena and I stepped in, side of the ring before the action began, it did seem a little bouncy towards the red corner. So there was a little bit of shakiness, but I think when I was hitting him, I believe my strength and, and, and my <clears throat> power advantage was pushing him backwards. And I, I think that's what you were seeing right. in those cases. But aside from that, the ring was very bouncy. They, I, you clearly had the uh, power on him. I don't think that anybody would question that. But it looked like he was the better volume puncher to me. He was, he was. He was using uh, his range, like I said, just peppering me with little small shots here and there, but a majority of them, not all of them, of course, because we all know it'd be nice to step into a 10-round fight and not get punched, but uh, a majority of them were deflected off the gloves and I was moving my head a lot and, and blocking a lot of them, but, but yeah, he kept coming. He was tough, and we knew that coming into the fight. Well, I uh, could only, like I say, watch the first five rounds and... Uh, at the night of the fight, I had him as the winner. But when I went to watch the replay, uh, I just couldn't see the last four and a half rounds. And these are early rounds here, champ, right? These are the early rounds, I think. I believe these are the later rounds already. Later rounds? Yeah. He, uh, he, the other thing I noticed, I was surprised. He stayed inside a lot longer than I thought he would, and he was... Pretty good flipping his head around trying to slip punches. He would stay around just long enough to, to let off some combinations and then he was moving. He was real awkward and I knew he would be. I think I might have underestimated just how awkward he was going to be. But, uh, you know, he definitely made it a tough fight, but a win's a win and we came out victorious. Now we're just looking forward to the future. Stay I like uh, ahead, awesome. when you throw your combinations, not, not just in this fight, you seem to know where the punches are going. A lot of guys will throw five punch combination. Hope something lands, but you seem to, you have a purpose. I do, I like to pick my shots. I think I've always been that kind of fighter, even in the amateurs. And with that pro experience, it just, that's what you get over the years. So when you're throwing a combination, you're concentrating where that first one's going and then muscle memory takes over. Exactly. Because uh, you didn't just always throw left hooks to his head. Sometimes you were digging them to the ribs and uh, do you prefer to start your combinations with your left hands, or can you get away with Well, them? my left hand has always been my power hand, so I tend to lean towards my left hand, but I knew I had to mix it up against him. I knew that he was going to be awkward, so I had to go high and low, work that body because he was going to be have that tall frame. So that's what we did in training camp. That's what we did in the fight. One thing I thought he did smart, you had clearly had some great moments. And when you stopped punching, he'd immediately come in with these... They weren't very powerful, but it was like he was trying to confuse the judges. And, and it worked. It worked. It made for a close fight. I feel like I was starting off every round strong. I feel like he was, uh, you know, picking up momentum in the middle of the round, and I feel like we'd edge each other out. It was real tight towards the finish, so they were real close rounds, real tough to judge, but we came out victorious, and we really uh, pushed the pace and showed people what we're made of. 
Well, he, um, the first round I gave to you, you, you seem to be sharper with your punches, although he did throw, when I watched the replay, throw a lot of uh, lighter shots than you, obviously. But he, it seemed like he threw more of them. But I definitely thought you won the first round. Then he, I gave him the second, and then I found the third round very confusing to score both that night and then yesterday when I watched the replay. I, I feel like the whole fight was like that. It was a teeter top back and forth, round after round. But at the end of the day, that's what a championship fight is all about. When you're fighting for a WBC title, that's what the fans deserve, and that's what we gave them. That's what they got. We'll be back to Legacy Boxing Showcase for one more segment after these messages. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations, or visit us online at goldenpride.abq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of Provia Sports Network. Get into the game with Garden Swartz Team Sales. They have everything you need from screen printing, embroidery, and digital printing services, high school letterman jackets, and all high school and club uniforms and individual and team apparel with the most reliable brands like Speedline, Rollins, and Wilson. And don't forget to check out the latest F7 shut helmet. It's all at Garden Swartz Team Sales. Give them a call, 505-884-1234. Garden Swartz Team Sales. The New Mexico High School Coaches Association, established in 1941, is an organization of New Mexico's best and most professional interscholastic coaches. Coaches across work daily to help our student athletes excel in the classroom, on the field of play, and in our communities. Students that participate in interscholastic activities attain higher grades, higher graduation rates, and higher wages. Responsible for the North-South All-Star Games, statewide coaches award program, and providing multiple professional development opportunities for New Mexico's coaches. Be a great coach by coaching beyond the game. Perez Collision Center is a proud sponsor of ProView Networks and Albuquerque Boxing. Perez Collision Center offers expert knowledge on any of your auto body and paint needs. Give them a call today, 505-254-4655 or stop by for a visit at 2415 2nd Street Northwest in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Perez Collision Center. Welcome back to Legacy Boxing Showcase, sponsored by Legacy Boxing Promotions. Ed Nunez, along with Austin Colleen, WBC Latino and New Mexico welterweight champ, Josh Pitbull Tortoise, also his son Julian, joining us on set as well. Champ, there's so many things you want to do, and I know you're taking a well-deserved vacation with your family this week. Six fight win streak here, your five round or your five fight uh, TKO stop, you know, you're, you're, that, that string's over, but you still got the win. And that's, as you mentioned, the most important thing. What's next for Josh Pitbull Totus? Well, like you mentioned, after, of course, the rest time and enjoying it with the family, we hope to get back to the drawing board. We want the big fights. We want the TV fights. I feel like this was definitely worthy of that. Um, I mentioned it after the fight, just walking into that venue, seeing the bright lights in that ring, seeing everybody there. I felt like this was a fight that could have and should have been on TV, but hopefully in the future we can work on bringing something like that to our state of uh, New Mexico and bring, bringing, um, you know, the fight scene back to life where, where it belongs. That's, uh, I know that uh, they had said that, I think after your last fight, win a couple and we got some plans for you. I'm, ge I'm guessing and gathering that's still in the works and we wish you, of course, all the best. Austin? Uh, you mentioned... Uh you spent a little time with Shariah Maru. Now this, right now, the Olympic Village is having training camp and Abraham Perez is up there, but she elected to stay home. Do you think that was a good move? Um, I think she's gonna get a great training here. I help her a lot. I've been working with them recently with their strength and conditioning, been pushing them in the gym. So um, I think she knows what's best for her. And, and I think that moving forward, they'll make the decisions that they need to make. The, uh, Mentioning that, I noticed over the years, not just recently, you're very good sparring with weaker opponents, not beating them up, letting them feel comfortable to come at you. And uh, you've actually helped fighters. I can think of a couple of examples in particular where you told them, well, you're doing this wrong and 
then you do next round you have them work on it again and again. Well, I, I've continued to say this throughout my career, and I probably sound like a broken record, but I've always been about other people, not just myself. I want to better everybody around me too. I'm not trying to be better than anybody. I'm not trying to outshine anybody else. I just want to see us all succeed. And if I can help somebody out along the way, it's even better. And I think that in those kind of situations where I have to even tone it down a little bit, I think I learn a little bit about myself. So I think all work is good work and, and we all learn from a little bit in that ring. Well, if, if they know you're not going to try to knock your head off, now they can bring it to you harder, which helps you. Helps me with my defense, my head movement, and things that I need to work on. Uh, you, were, you trained with uh, Danny Garcia last year. And I think that helped you, you know, with, with Angel Garcia, his father. So I think all these fights that you've had, you know, what did you learn? And I guess I want to ask you this. Every fight is a, 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 a you learn something, right? Absolutely. And, uh, Oliveira right in front of your face. No one's going anywhere. What did you learn on Saturday? You, you, you got the win. You got the decision. And sometimes decisions like that, they can go either way, right? Um, but what did you learn about yourself, on, uh, about what you need to work on going, going into the future? What do you need to work on? Well, like you mentioned earlier, I was on that five uh, streak for KO. So it was humbling to go 10 rounds, to really have to dig deep, and to be in against a tough opponent like Overa. You really uh, learn about what you need to work on. And now we're going to go back to the drawing board and work on those things. I think I need to work a little bit more on, uh, like Austin mentioned, letting more combinations go. Um, maybe letting go a little bit more, leaving it all in the ring, a little more angles, small adjustments that I think can be made easily. And, and from there on, we'll be moving into that world-class uh, potential. And you think that's next? I want to get this in. We've got about two minutes left. Uh, Manny Pacquiao, a decision over Keith Thurman on Saturday night. Um, were you surprised? I was. I really thought Keith Thurman was going to be victorious. I thought he was going to be more powerful, use his youth to his advantage. But Manny Pacquiao, the great, he's a legend in the making. So... I mean, he pulled it off. You can't doubt guys like that. Eight Especially times world when you champion. Have, yeah, when you have God on your side, it's hard to be defeated. Austin, did that surprise you? Did that decision just surprise you? I was, Pacquiao over Thurman. I was with Josh. I thought Thurman would win. Uh, I was talking to Fidel Maldonado Sr. He watched the fight, and he said it should have been a unanimous decision. That Pacquiao should have won the unanimous Yeah, he said he thought the judge, the judge who voted for Thurman was in another building. Real quick, I think... Pacquiao probably doesn't want any Viral Spence he, who's going to fight Sean Porter. You think uh, Pacquiao and uh, Crawford might be next? Terrence Crawford. How about Pacquiao and Josh Pitbull Torres? <laughs> always a, that's always a good possibility as well. I'd love to have a big fight, hopefully here in our home state of New Mexico. Any, any idea? Can you tell us what might be next for Josh Pitbull uh, Torres? When can, will we see you again in the ring? I would like to fight hopefully no later than a couple months. I want to get back in the gym as soon as possible work on the things we need to work on, continue fighting, continue winning, and continue inspiring people around me. Legacy next boxing uh, show will be August 24th at Buffalo Thunder. Chance we might see you there? I'll be in the venue. I'll be supporting all the up-and-comers, but it'll be my night to be a fan, to relax, enjoy a night of great fights. <laughs> and you know what? I can't think of anyone else who deserves it more. That'll do it for this episode of Legacy Boxing Showcase for producer Josh Brown, Austin Colleen, WBC Latino, and New Mexico welterweight champ, Josh Pitbull Torres, I'm Ed Nunez. We'll be back in two weeks for another episode of Legacy Boxing Showcase. Collision Center is a proud sponsor of ProView Networks and Albuquerque Boxing. Perez Collision Center offers expert knowledge on any of your auto body and paint needs. Give them a call today, 505-254-4655, or stop by for a visit at 2415 2nd Street Northwest in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Perez Collision Center.